Hello, and welcome to the next episode in this game-making series. Uh, last episode, we uh, made it so that random enemy ships could spawn in. But what I did in between episodes is I changed the UV map of the ship. Uh, that's not it. Previously, each of these was 1 16th of the map, and I've gone ahead and made them 1 quarter of the map. So we've got uh, front, top, engine, side, and all the rest of the ship. Uh, and that means that we can have much higher detail icons on those parts of the ships. And I've created a couple more materials with, uh, I think I have three different engine logos and four different front logos. Uh, so what we're going to do in this episode is allow the player to modify their own ship. And to do that we're going to create a new scene, which is the player edits his own ship scene. Um, the reason it's its own scene rather than being something like an overlay on top of the galaxy map is simply because it will allow us to avoid having a massive amount of headaches over mouse control and it will also allow us to uh, use fairly complicated scripts that we wouldn't want to try and overlay on top of the galaxy map. Later on, for example, we might have the ability to stretch your ship and we don't want to try and attach handles to the ship on the galaxy map. That would just be a uh, annoying. So instead we're going to have it in its own scene. And I've gone ahead and I've created a new scene called shipedit.unity. And that is the scene we will be using. So we have to go into the build settings and edit like this. It'll be scene number three. But we have to go back out into our spawn scene and change it so that it actually just switches us over to scene three instead of scene one. And then we're going to hit play and you can see that we are now in that scene and you can see that it is an ugly scene uh, so one of the problems is that our ship is uh, our ship is not at zero 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 and our camera is pointed kind of off crazy uh, and there's a whole bunch of uh, and there's a whole bunch of blue in the background rather than a nice black so let's go ahead and address the pieces of those we need first uh, here in ship edit uh, we're, we're not going to go ahead and make a star map because I don't have a skybox that's suitable for a star map. Instead, we're just going to change the background color to black. I'm going to... There we go. And that means that we won't have that blue. We'll have a stark black instead. We're also going to go ahead and... Now we're, we're done with that, we can go back into the spawn scene. We're going to go ahead and inside of the ship's persistent player ship... Here it is. We're going to have it so that when it loads up that scene, it knows what to do. Grind, 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 grind. You have mono loads up so much faster on this new machine. Still buggy though. Alright, so here we are. On level was loaded. If level equals two, then do something. So since we now have a complex system going, we're gonna go ahead and make it into a switch. And we can comment up this. Oh, this isn't three. It's this isn't four. It's three. There we are. So once again, we have to keep in mind the order in which these things load. Uh, on level was loaded happens before start is called, uh, which isn't a problem in this case. But if you were initializing something in that scene, you wanted to make sure you have to be very careful about how you use start versus on level was loaded. So we need to go ahead and move ourselves. So transform.position equals vector3.0. And then we're going to get the camera. And we're going to move it. All right, so let's go ahead and see whether or not that works. Yep. So now you can see our ship. And right now we have this very, very ugly setup where we have this matte red thing and an A attached to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create an overlay which allows us to select from a drop-down list, or maybe not from a drop-down list, but from uh, a list of options as to what kind of map we want uh, for our front and our rear and the color we would like for it. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a new object over in that editor group. We need a new object for actually doing the editing. Uh, so we might as well attach it to the main camera. Let's go ahead and make a script for it. Ship edit script. Put it on the main camera. 
Let's pop it open here. Um, now this happens after on level was loaded and I actually want to make sure that it works because in the past I've had trouble oh. in the past I've had trouble with it considering the persistent player ship object to have been decommissioned even though it's uh, specifically there to not be decommissioned. So let's go ahead and just check and see that that works. No errors, good. Alright, so... Yep, seems to have worked fine. So now we just have to uh, have a list of all of the things that are possible and then show them and allow the player to select them. So. like that. And then over here in, we have to go back to that scene. Here in the scene, we're going to go ahead and drag that stuff on. Now we actually need to understand what material the ship currently has selected, so that's what our next step is going to be. So here's where we start to have to question exactly how we're going to do this, because we're talking about getting uh, if we go back out to the spawn, we're talking about getting the uh, capsules materials and the question is whether or not we have any capsule being saved at any point here. Um, it doesn't look, look like we save the capsule anywhere so we're gonna have to actually change the ship class to save the capsule Uh, shield arcs, engine particles, damage particles. Um, there, that'll do. Now, when we actually create one using the uh, ship creator, we have to make we have to remember that uh, we're actually going to assign it for the player. But here in this, we have to actually save it. So, new ship dot hull equals hull dot get mm. mrend. That way, the player, when later on we start to use the same for both enemy ships and the player's ship, it'll be a seamless transition. So here we say ship.hull.materials1, and here we say ship.hull.materials2, uh, and that's currently selected engine. And of course we can also have a currently selected uh, fundamental, but we don't have a material for that yet. We'll do the same thing. I might do it off screen because there's no reason for you to see me do the same thing over and over and over. So let's take a look here, and um, hull has not been, oh yeah, because I forgot to assign it. Hull, hull, hull. Alright, so that worked fine. Um, except for they're backwards. That's fine. Oh, they're not backwards, they're just inverted awkwardly. Um, the capsules' uh, uh, materials are out of order. They've got the... Oh, okay, so here you can see we've got a couple of errors happening. Um, 
So let's go ahead and actually set these to null. There's got to be a null option, right? Null, there it is. There we go. Default diffuse, yep. All right, so here in, uh, we're gonna have to do a, an on GUI because we're gonna be using the GUI for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each of the possible um, materials and highlight the one that we're using and allow the others to be buttons. So let's go ahead and put them on the left because that's easier. These are actually backwards. No, no, they're right. I'm sorry. So here is a thing that we have to do. We can't actually say if top materials A equals currently selected top because they're going to be clones of each other. And I i don't think that a clone counts as the same material. I think it counts as a different material. But we'll just compare the name. Um, Uh, I've forgotten how to do this all of a sudden. Oh, is it uh, box? That's what it is. So this is where we're going to use that trick. Then we say currently selected top equals top materials A, and we actually have to create a new set of materials. We can't modify the materials that are on the ship's hull. We have to rebuild them. Oh, we can pull them out like that, though. We just grab them like this. And then modify them. And then set them again. Hum, yeah. All right, and then we can do the same for the other one, uh, for the uh, engine materials. We're going to put a big gap between them because we're going to be putting in a color selection wheel. Actually, why don't we go ahead and reset them and put them to the right slightly. There we are. And then instead of top materials, we'll be talking about engine materials. All right, well, let's see whether or not that works. I'm really whistling today. I hope that the, the mic's not picking it up very much. All right, so we've got nothing. Let's go ahead and pick some stuff. Yep, look at that. Nice and straightforward. So now we just have to have a color wheel to allow us to pick which color to choose. And later on we'll be changing this over into a different method, uh, you know, some kind of actual drop-down list type thing 
Um, but for now, we need to get the ability to choose a color. There's no built-in color select in the GUI as far as I know. Actually, let me double check that. No, as I thought, one doesn't exist, and opening Firefox to do that um, nearly caused my machine to crash for some reason. Firefox does not get along well with Cam Studio. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and create a rainbow in a drawing program. So let me open up GIMP. All right, so here we are going to be building ourselves a little bit of a rainbow so that we can choose from our ship's colors. And this is actually kind of cool because later on when we get to the actual game part of the game, you might have this be limited to depending on your faction. So for example, if you were playing, uh, you know, whatever our version of the Federation is, you might have a very different uh, set of available colors. That's a very small brush. And I'm, not, I'm just using the mouse for this, not my uh, um, not my Intuos, but that's okay. So this is this will work. I'll go ahead and save it to the correct directory. All right, so I saved it right here. You can see it. Uh, and this little candy cane thing is going to be what we choose our color from. But we need to do a couple of things in order to make it so we can do a color picker of it. First off, we have to clamp it. There's no repeating going on. Then we have to change it to point. Then we have to change it to true color, we have to hit apply, but then we actually have to do something else. We have to change it to advanced mode because we need to be able to read and write from it. I did all that changing before switching over to advanced mode because advanced mode has a whole bunch of other options and I didn't want to get lost. Um, but with read write enabled, we'll be able to tell what pixel the user is clicking on and that's vital, obviously, for being able to pick uh, out what, <laughs> what color the user is picking, picking on. So let's go back into this, and we need to create a new variable, like so. Go back over here. Oh, we have to go into that. We are not in the correct scene. There we go. Voila. Now we can go back out to the ship spawn. All right, so we need to actually be able to edit this uh, color by going into the script here and uh, popping up the color as a button on its own, which is what we'll do right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do, um, uh, this is a little bit complicated, but we actually have to make it so that we check and see whether or not the user is clicking on the object without using a button, because it's not a button. So to do that, we need to use the, uh, first off, let's draw, let's draw it. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add it. No, that's fine, that's 30. Might as well keep it the same. Uh, so here we have to say, if uh, event dot current dot type equals mouse down, there we are. Lowercase one is the one we want, and uh, button dot contains event dot current dot mouse position, and it may be that the y axis is inverted there. We'll have, we'll find out shortly. Uh, then we just go ahead and, and debug dot log clicked on color and we'll be changing that over in a moment just we'll make sure that that works first yep clicked on color so that's correct alright so to set that color up so that we actually get the color out of it we need to go ahead and determine what pixel is being clicked on for that we go ahead and we do this float x equals um, uh, button dot uh, equals sorry x equals event dot current dot mouse position dot x minus uh, uh, button 
dot x divided by uh, button dot width and that gets us the x percent and then we just multiply that by uh, int pix uh, px or pixel x equals x times uh, color picker dot width mathf dot floor to int there we are we we'll do the same for y like that. Put some semicolons in so you don't think you're crazy here. Then we do color equals, oh color, color equals color picker dot get pixel uh, px and py. And for some reason this isn't capitalized. Inconsistent capitalization. And then we just set the material color to that. We just say top materials dot color equals. Well, we can do set color, can't we? No, we don't have to do that. We'll just do color. It's color. So shall we see if that works? No. Oh, uh, top materials uh, currently selected top. I mean. That's better. So let's go ahead and give ourselves something and then recolor it. Oh, perfect, like a dream. Oh, look, but Y is inverted. So we do have to invert Y, but not until the very end. So then we just do the exact same thing for the other one. Except for instead of currently selected top, we do currently selected engine. So here's a zero. Let's go ahead and make it black. And then let's go ahead and give ourselves up some black stripes. Boom. Woo. Scary. All right. So that's all we needed. Now, obviously, we don't have a launch button, but that's easy enough. Uh, just go to the bottom and say button equals new rect screen dot width minus 200 screen dot height minus 200 um, 100 now just 180 and uh, 60 we say button dot our GUI dot button or if GUI dot button uh, button comma launch then application dot load level nope one so we create our own custom ship as we would like and then we hit launch and we go straight into the game and you will see as we get into battle here at uh, ML one alt Almen Walt uh, whatever you can see that that is in fact what we've selected. Next, we'll probably fix those crazy physics events when we spawn in by creating actual combat events. Um, but that's okay. We don't need to do that right now. That's fine for this particular, uh, particular uh, video. That's it.